guys, it's Kristen. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am in my third and final year of a Doctor of Physical Therapy program and I film tons of videos here on my channel all about physical therapy and my journey to becoming a Doctor of Physical Therapy. So if you are interested, please be sure to take a second and subscribe down below. Today I am filming a Q&A because I've been getting a lot of good questions recently in my Instagram DMs, in the comment section of recent vlogs as well as a few miscellaneous questions that I've gotten on my community tab. So I figured I would sit down and answer them all and give you a little bit of a life update as well because my life has kind of been chaos lately. Also a ton of birds like chirping outside my window right now. So if you can hear that, I am very, very sorry, but I have my phone here. So I'm going to pull up the questions and get on in to the video. So the first question says, Hi Kristen, is this current clinical rotation considered out of state for you? I'm not sure what to do when I have an out of state clinical, if I should find roommates or get a one bedroom apartment. I didn't think apartments allowed 12 week leases. What do you recommend? So this is kind of confusing actually. If you didn't know, I attend Mercer University, which is in Atlanta, Georgia. However, my family lives in Philadelphia, kind of the suburbs surrounding Philadelphia specifically. I graduate in the spring. I do want to move back home just to be closer to my family for when I'm like looking to get married, buy a house, have kids, that sort of thing. I do not want to be 12 hours away from my entire family. So I chose to get as many clinical rotations as I could kind of closer to my family. So two of my three full-time rotations are in Pennsylvania. And unfortunately it worked out so the one in Georgia was right in the middle. So yeah, so for my first and last clinical, I'm living at home. So I really only needed housing for this rotation, which is August through November, which is 12 weeks. And I kind of exhausted all of my options. I reached out to people I knew that lived kind of in the area to see if they knew of any options. I looked at Airbnb, Verbo, kind of long-term leases, and those were so, so, so expensive. And since I did have all the furniture to furnish an apartment from like college and previous apartments in grad school, I decided to just find an apartment that did short-term leases. And I didn't think many did two or three month leases, but they actually do. They advertise it on the website. So if I were you, I would just call up and ask if they do short-term leases and what price it would be. But for me, that is what made the most sense. Obviously rent is gonna be more than if you signed a 12 month lease, but I am here for such a short period of Next time. Next question is, when are you taking the NPTE? So if you didn't know, that's basically the board's licensing exam that you have to take in order to practice and have your license as a physical therapist. And you can either take it in April or July, um, and also other times throughout the year, but if you're graduating in May, obviously you're probably looking at the April or the July date. And my school actually encourages us to take it in April. However, I'm kind of in a tricky situation because since I will be sitting for my Pennsylvania licensure, they don't let you take it before you graduate. So technically I graduate in May, so they don't let you take it in April. So I could, option one, take it in Georgia in April and then kind of pay and have it transferred to Pennsylvania. Or I can just wait and take it in July for Pennsylvania. So I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I want to do. If you have any advice for me, if you already took the NPTE, please leave it down below. The next question here is, have you already started applying for jobs yet or how does that work? So from what I've heard, most people start applying for jobs kind of in their last semester, like, January, February-ish range. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I was offered a job by my first clinical site that I was at over the summer, so that definitely is something I'm really, really considering because I absolutely loved that clinic. I'm also very interested in pelvic floor physical therapy. That is what my final clinical rotation is in. So depending on how that goes, I'll probably also apply to some other kind of pelvic floor private practice clinics, but I haven't applied to anything yet. The next question I thought was very, very interesting, and it says, Hi Kristen, I just got accepted into physical therapy school. Do you ever regret becoming a physical therapist or choosing this major? 
And I thought this was very, very interesting um, because I know that there is a lot of talk about this kind of across social media and other platforms are constantly kind of talking down about the profession and almost discouraging you from entering the profession as a student because the way things are going with our reimbursements being cut and that sort of thing. But I honestly do not regret becoming a physical therapist. I personally know I'm going to be so happy and fulfilled from this career. Obviously we are not paid as much as other healthcare professionals that have a doctorate level education, which can be frustrating. I will say being in the hospital, it is a bit frustrating because I have seen firsthand a ton of people not really understanding what we do. Specifically, I've seen orthopedic surgeons not prescribing physical therapy after total joint replacements, which in my opinion, that is completely unacceptable and uncalled for. It is 2022 people. I've also seen doctors put in orders for physical therapy to do passive range of motion on sedated pac patients in the ICU. And if you guys know, that does absolutely nothing for the patient. I've seen insurance denying claims and not even reading our note again. So I've just seen a lot of, lot of messed up things that have really like hurt my heart, but the end of the day, no, no regrets. I know I will love this career, so if you really, really, really want to be a physical therapist, don't listen to the haters. I personally think change is coming and things are looking up. There are a lot of advocacy efforts now. Our scope of practice is expanding. We are trying to fight the reimbursement and get reimbursed more. Direct access is growing, which means you can see PTs without a doctor's referral. And we are trying to get approval to order imaging and prescribe certain medications. So there, I think there is positive change coming, but you just gotta be part of the advocacy efforts. It makes me so mad when people just complain, complain, complain about things that are wrong with the profession and then aren't doing anything to help the situation. So that is enough about that. I will get off my soapbox now. Someone said, did you choose your undergrad degree with PT in mind? Thoughts on studying kinesiology versus biology before PT school? So yes, I did. I have known that I wanted to be a physical therapist since I was in like elementary school because I was a competitive gymnast. So I had a lot of experience with physical therapy. Like I said, I'm from Pennsylvania, but I did my undergrad at the University of Georgia because they have the number six ranked kinesiology department in the country. So I specifically went to that school to pursue that department and the exercise science major within the department. So yes, Yes, to answer your question, and I definitely recommend majoring in kinesiology over biology just because it will introduce you to some more like physical therapy school relevant content. Next question, I just started my second year of undergrad and want to be a PT. Any recommendations for things to study or look at before getting in? Honestly, no, just do as well as you can in your classes, especially those prereq classes because they will calculate your overall GPA as well as just your prereq GPA when you are applying. Try to get in a diverse number of shadowing hours in different settings, but everything you need to know content-wise will be taught to you within physical therapy school. Someone says, tips on how to get volunteer hours or how to become an aide. So volunteer hours, honestly, just call up physical therapy clinics and ask if they are taking volunteers. I personally found it was a lot harder to get hours in my college town because there are a lot of students obviously trying to shadow in your college town, especially if you do go to a bigger university. So I always tried to get as many hours as I could over breaks, like summer, summer break, winter break, uh, sometimes Thanksgiving break, but mostly summer and winter. I would try to go like every day for like two weeks or so and just get as many as I could racked on up. As far as an aid, again, if you go to a bigger university, it's gonna be hard because obviously everyone is gonna wanna be paid for their shadowing hours, but just look online, try to find listings, try to get a connection. Like if someone in your sorority, for example, works as an aid, see if they can kinda hook you up, use your connections. The last question I'm going to answer is, how was your experience taking the GRE? Any study tips or advice? Awesome channel, by the way. Thank you. So my experience taking the GRE, I've talked about in previous Q&As, I believe, but I literally just ordered a book on Amazon, did a bunch of studying over Christmas break, I believe. Yeah, it was junior year. I studied really hard for like three weeks and 
I went to a big university, so they offer the GRE on campus. I think a lot of schools do do that, but if not, just find a testing center close to your college or find, find a testing center. I think it's offered through Pearson, so it's offered like every single day, multiple times of the day. It's not like a few times a year situation. You can take it as much as you want. So I studied all break, literally took it the day I got back to my college town after break before classes started, or maybe it was like the first or second day of class, before I had other kind of stuff to worry about school-wise. I took it and I did do pretty well, but a lot of schools do super score, so I decided I would just take it one more time. And I think I did a little bit worse on the verbal section than the math section, so I really, really studied hard just for that one section to try to get that score up, so then my total super score would be higher, obviously. So I took it again, I think like a couple weeks later, um, and just studied a little bit like that one section and that was that. I think my score was like a 310, something like that, but I honestly don't think the GRE is too important. I think it's just a little checkbox. Most schools you just need a minimum of a 300 and then they kind of check off that box and look at the rest of your application. So those are all the questions I'm going to answer for you guys today. I wanted to thank you guys so much for watching this Q&A and for supporting my channel. We are almost to 5,000 subscribers, so thank you guys so, so much for all of your love and support. I can't believe I only have pretty much one more semester left of school before I am a PT of my own. I'm so, so, so excited to be working and just to be, not be a student anymore. It has been long, long overdue. 24 years of my life in school is enough, people. Thank you guys again. Be sure to subscribe down below if you enjoyed, and I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye!